just would like to thank everyone who found time to be with us today. And at this point, I will turn it over to Ferdinand so that they can coordinate the questions and answers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. So, gentlemen of the press, the question and answer segment commences at this point. Okay, Michael Oni of uh, Enyiba FM. Anastasia Uchenna or Demena of Magic mm -hmm. FM. Give me your excellence. Mm -hmm. This is video again. My mm -hmm. question, just two questions. Um, 
during your preamble, you did talk about the reopening of the specialist of Toledo Maya. And when that happened, there was a debate about why the specialist of the appears to have been abandoned despite the millions of naira that has been invested in that particular facility. So my question is, have you abandoned the specialist hospital in Aba? Yes or no and why? Then my second question is about transparency. There's a lot of, the opposition is pushing so much figures around the government and sometimes when we anchor programs and they come and say, Alex Ote has received 500 billion Alex Ote has received, because we don't know the truth, we can't defend, we can't even say, no, 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 sorry, sir, it's not like that, it's not like that. I'm talking about telling audience when a location drops, you say, oh, we've just received two billion, this is what we're gonna do with it, this is what we're doing with it. Okay, you are doing a contract, it's also to me. This is how much the contract was, this, you know, we need a lot of information as far what your government is doing financially, so that when we hear some of these figures from outside, we can reconcile and say, okay, no, this is the right one, this is the wrong one. I don't know if it's not your style, or maybe in the coming days you want to do that. Basically, that's just my question. Openness okay. and the ABBA specialist hospital. Okay, so uh, you see the work has started. And the issue of opposition, I don't think we should work on it. Mean, there's a man called Augustine Churchill. I'm not sure you, 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 you met him, did you? Okay, so he used to be the Prime Minister of the UK. So, uh, he had a, a famous quote, he said, you will never get to your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that bounces. Okay, so opposition is allowed to weigh. You see, 500 billion is in uh, two, two months. When they were here for the past 24 years, let's assume it's 500 billion you received it too. What did they do with that? Okay, so uh, my job is not to respond to the position. I don't even pay attention to it. The only thing I know is that they held this state to the children. And we have just broken loose. And they should let us rest. But I, I, if they don't want to let us praise, we have a right to praise. So I'm not here for opposition. So they can wear if they want to wear. As an Afghan, what should bother you is that people who put their mouth on the field bottle uh, will force their mouth out. And when you force their mouth out, they will wear, they will scream, they will shout. There is no problem with transparency. There is no, no, no issue at all. Whatever we receive is in the public domain. In fact, by the time before, yesterday, if you watch the TV, you'll find that uh, the Federal Education had published that 1.1 trillion was shared amongst all the component parts of government. And that about 52 or 58% goes to the Federal to the center, and the rest, about 48%, is shared by the city's cross abuja. So, and then if you want to drill for that, you can get the numbers. So, but I'm not going to spend my time responding to people who don't have any jobs except to look for how to distract. I'm sorry, I think the question is not about things, it's about us journalists. No, you, you, you said opposition gave you information yes. and you want to defend. And we don't know what to say, whether it's true or not. What it is a lie. It is a lie. That's what I'm just tracing. And if you need any information, you can only get information. But I can't stay here and throw numbers in the air. Okay, so any information you want to get, you can get. You are entitled to it. But because opposition says that we received 100 billion, you can as well take it to the bank if you want to. But logically, the question to ask them is that if they were receiving 100 billion every year, every month, what did they do with it? Since it's opposition. But if you want information, you can get information. There's nothing we are doing that is hidden. But somebody puts up a number, I saw some 
somebody to say we are spending 335 billion naira creating government have, I mean commissioners quarter and there are 19 of them. So if you multiply 35 by 19, that you get almost 700 billion. Oh, that guy is entitled to excusing his mouth and his uh, media to deceive himself. I believe that other people are wiser. And if you see what has happened in the last four months, then you will know that the people that are willing don't have any right to go. Thank you. Okay. Mr. C of Love FM. Um, your Excellency. I'm here, um, Probably introduce yourself. Be, Probably introduce yourself. Probably uh, love at the moment, yeah, but uh, popularly known as Mr. C. Yes, I have two questions, Excellency. Uh, first of all, I will hear this a little bit from what your preamble talked about. Uh, I would like to look at the local government system. And Nigeria operates a federal, a federal system of government uh, with uh, the federal uh, state and local government. And of course, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1999, in section 7, subsection 1, says that uh, the system of local government by a democratically elected local government councils is one of these constitutions and guaranteed. How soon, said, are we looking at organizing? government elections. That's one. Uh, the other one has to do with um, your campaign promise, all of your campaign promise uh, you made during the campaigns. Uh, I think specifically on um, February, 13th of February, where you were addressing the crowd, and you pointedly said, I won't need security votes as governor of the state. I'm going to use security votes to work with the people of the state. Your Excellency, can you speak to this? Are you going towards the line of the campaigns or what you said during your campaigns? I would like for you to address this. Okay, the first question you asked about uh, local government. Yes, local government uh, elections will be organized. They're just almost. So the first thing that we do is to appoint a transition committee and the transition committee will lead the local government elections. We don't have a time table yet. And the other issue about security votes. Security vote is a um, statutory headache when you look at the expenses. The point that I was raising is that using security votes for other purposes other than working for other people would not be allowed in the government. That's exactly what I'm doing. We are not departing from the campaign committee. You can see what is happening. You can see what we are doing with security. You can see the vehicles. You can see Operation Crush. You can see everything that is happening. The question to ask you would be do you feel a sense of insecurity living in Asia State? the moment. I'm not too sure that the answer will not be in there. I mean, will be in the affirmation. So, I believe that we will continue to do the right thing, employing the resources of other people to work for other people. But at the day when money is that share, I'm sure if you have been close to this government, and you've been close to people who uh, ordinary believe that Government must give money to them. I believe that uh, they have a different story to tell us today. So we have um, we have uh, continued to make the necessary changes, and we now have also set up the Abia State Orientation Agency. And the whole idea is for people to begin to think different. See that difference. Uh, I always say that if you stay in an oval for too long, anytime you are released, 
even into a room temperature, you start shooting. So people have been used to the wrong way of doing things for too long, imagine. So you have uh, rubbish, you dump it into the gutter, uh, you don't respect traffic rules, you don't do things right. So we are trying to see that things should be done right. It may take time, but we we'll believe we'll get there. So I don't know if I have answered your question. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so I'm Sinese. Introduce yourself and ask your question. And if you can leave the question to one each so that we can go around. The double barrel question takes a little, a little bit of time. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. My name is uh, Da Ochi. And my question is uh, uh, of New Telegraph newspaper. The program or the project you commissioned today, the AIIP, uh, I can't, uh, I couldn't figure the time frame for the completion or for the delivery. Uh, that's, uh, then we see uh, the, the palliative, for instance, you know, that's uh, where we are looking at at this at a time like this. People who want to know the form the palliative will take to cushion the effect, the present uh, hardship they are going through. You know, if it is a, a transportation, what form and when? Thank you, Your Excellency. You still ask two questions. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, there are different aspects of the AIRP. Um, some part of it, you will start seeing delivery in the next six months to one year. Some will have a longer lead time. We're talking of a modular refinery, we're talking of a fertilizer and a petrochemical plant. Uh, those are not projects that you deliver overnight. So those will take time. So the delivery timeline will depend on the part of the project. Now, on um, palliative, um, the uh, commodities we received, we have distributed all of them. And the way we handled it is that we believe that it is the most vulnerable in the society that need to get those commodities first. But then going forward, we also believe that one of the ways to cushion the effect of the removal of the fluid subsidy is by uh, making transportation cheaper for everyone. And we decided, based on the input we got from civil society, labor, uh, other unions, EUC, NFC, and others. Everybody seems to favor compressed natural gas powered uh, buses. And uh, we are already in discussion with uh, companies that are involved in uh, producing and selling those vehicles, those buses. And that is the form uh, that uh, we intend to use the rest of the money, that is the amount for the palliative. That is the form we intend to spend. I don't know if your question was answered. Thank you. Okay. Go to one point. Good evening, My name is Ugochu Wanko, the publisher of Abia Falls here. Yes your predecessor used to neglect the rural areas. Uh, they called it, if you get Abba rights, you get Abba rights. I disagreed with that mantra because I'm from Ba. If you get Abba rights, you have not gotten Ba rights. Sir, 
I want to ask. I agree that priority should be given to Aba and Domwai as the commercial map center of the state and the capital city. My question is, how do you intend to marry the development of Aba and Domwai with a concurrent infrastructural uplift of these rural areas? Thank you, sir. All right. Your question is good. Um, I believe that when somebody says if you get a barrage, you get a barrage. I believe what that person means is that a chunk of the internally generated revenue will come from a bar. Now, when that internally generated revenue comes, what do you do with it? You will deploy it to other areas. If that's what you want to do. But it's a question of choice. You may also decide to put it in your book. But from what we can see and uh, the direction we are going, even when we don't have money, we draw promise revenues. That's why I was uh, uh, surprised. Somebody is talking about 500 million. Uh, some of the, of, of the projects, we don't pay the land. We don't negotiate the feed and based on, on our words, some contractors have moved to site and they are delivering good results. Uh, so um, the, the whole idea is that you need to generate revenue. And the way to generate revenue, like I've always said, is you have to invest. And uh, at the final taxation and government share of uh, the prosperity that has created. So for you to have a moral obligation to collect taxes, you must have done something. And so that's what it means. And that's why we pay attention to our bar and of course our capital city for now. And going forward, we are already also doing a few things. You can see palliative measures on the home mic as well as on the way to Ohafia Road. Uh, you can see palliative measures in some other places. And I believe we are coming to a very soon. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, and I think that should happen in the next few weeks. So, uh, I some of your leaders came to make a representation there's a rule that is not halfway. Yes. Uh, so uh, I'm the commissioner of course to take a look at uh, the rule and see what we can do. So it is our wish. If money were everywhere, we would have battled everywhere at the same time. But uh, because of the scarcity of resources, it's one step at a time. We will get there. Thank you. Okay. Something is it? Flow yes, I see. My name is Something is it from Flow Nitro Economic. My question borders on the civil service and the reform that is ongoing. The administration suspended deployment secretaries. Then there was a circular that those who have served for more than four years, eight years should go. Then recently there was an announcement of an examination took place today for the appointment of new Premier Secretaries. What about those that hadn't served up to four years? We didn't see any secular uh, prompting their return or retirement. Thank you. All right. Um, is it, there's a sequence, okay, when, when they were suspended. The next thing was to now look at those that should stay and those that should go. It's actually not for you, it's eight years. If you are served for eight years, based on the law, the law had existed prior to our coming to government. And if you follow, it's the same measure that the federal government adopted. Uh, so those that were due for retirement have been asked to proceed on retirement. Now, for those that are not due uh, for a time and they do not have um, cases against them, of course they will be recovered. Uh, but then we need to also understand, apart from like in the past, when we had 34 or thereabout ministries, uh, today we have only 19. And, um, that presupposes that we cannot have more than 19, maybe plus one, uh, 
when you think of the government, government house, uh, permanent secretary, the permanent secretary in the office of the SSG, that would be 21, and then one or two more, the clerk of the house, uh, that would be 21, not more than 22, sorry. Uh, so, and uh, to make the process transparent, we decided to put everybody through the process of, of uh, a written exam and then uh, an oral interview. And uh, you'll be surprised that I will sit in that oral interview because the recruitment process is one of the most important processes. If you don't get your leadership right, then every other thing will fail. Uh, so we are taking it very, very seriously. And we want to ensure that it's only the right people who qualify to occupy the position of permanent secretary uh, will be uh, given the opportunity to pursue it. Thank you very much. Okay. T.C. Barra. Good evening, Your Excellency. My name is T.C. Barra, Rapid Broadcasting Network. I could have asked you about the Imba Economic City touted by the previous government. I could have asked you if you plan to recruit into the civil service. I could have asked you a whole lot of other questions, but I'd like you to tell us what your daily routine is. From morning till night. Could you just run us through what your daily routine is? Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't have a routine. <laughs> I don't have a routine. I sleep, I wake up, and then if I wake up early, I eat the juice, and then one hour after, I'm ready for work, and then I, I walk till sometime in the afternoon when I have brunch, because I'm not used to breakfast, you know. Some of us are children of poor men. You don't wake up you have a breakfast. You, you swallow your paper in the afternoon, one is one and uh, get the show. So after that, I continue with the day's activities, meetings, and all that. Sometimes, it well late into the night, and early hours of the next morning, and then I sleep again. I don't know if that uh, is a good routine. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Remember me again. Let's see. I have just one question. Just your, name, your, name, please. your name, please. Your name, please. My question is about the government house. Why is the military removed from all factories before? My question is about the government house. The previous government um, said they had finished the government house and are prepared for you to check in once you inaugurated the election. What's the position? What exactly is happening to this? Well, There's a building uh, that started a long time. That is governor's lodge. And where the governor should uh, reside. But there are no office there. So you cannot say it's government house. It's just governor's lodge. And unfortunately, I believe it was commissioned at the twilight of the last administration, precisely on the 28th of May. And uh, after this wearing in, I drove there. I drove there with the first man, uh, at least camera man. And I was surprised at what I saw, because uh, uh, I can only describe it as a white sepulcher. So it's a building on fourth floor, there's a little basement, and then there is a ground floor and two floors up. The ground floor was properly finished, well finished, polished, looking quite good. And that's where you have some sitting rooms and office, the kitchen, dining, guest rooms. So it was properly furnished, very good. Outside was also well painted. But then, as we made attempt to go to the First of all, the gentleman who was there, he stated, So when we got to the first floor, where the bedrooms were supposed to be, 
we found that uh, it was not finished. Nothing did, there was nothing, and finally we had nothing. Okay. Then I'm getting to the second floor. We found it wasn't even plastered. So it was not updated. Okay, so we closed the tunnel. So nobody can be there. You can only exist on the ground floor. So you need a bedroom to sleep. Um, the contractor had since approached us to say that they needed paving, that they were being good and if they were to finish the paving, that they would complete the project before the end of the year. Um, for me, it is not a priority since I asked some little place that I speak right now. Um, we will get back to it in due course. Uh, so our prior priority for now are uh, all the things that we are doing. We want to continue to pay salary by the 28th. Uh, by the time we receive the June allocation, we are able to pay June and we went back to May that we prepared something left behind. By the time we received the July, we paid July and went back to April. I was also not paid. And uh, when we received August, we paid August and went back to what was that of March. So uh, those are important. The rules are more important. The hospitals are more important. The schools. Uh, we feeding them and making them look like proper schools where our children will be trained. Those are more important to me than going to complete the government. So when I have a window and I have some flexibility with uh, my resources, I can do that, but it's not a priority. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bin Adoki. Good evening, Your Excellency. Introduce yourself. My name is Sobina from Norwegian. I work with Real FM. Real FM is in Abba, here. If somebody asked you about your chores for the day, and you have explained what your activities have been, those things happen in the university, Umuahim. That's where you do those things. You cannot come to Umuahim because the the new government house is still under construction. But there is one that some governors have habited, which, are, which is uh, situated here. So for how long will you operate from outside to over here until the new government house is completed? Sir, as you come from Umuahim, Every day to Umuahia or to Apa, you will see that some of the roads that are pliable, that are in good condition, at some point they mm -hmm. are dilapidated, especially where you have the railway crossing. Even though the Nigerian Railway, um, Nigerian railway Corporation have le has left Apia, but those points, those crossings, the um, the rail lines are still there, even when they have the majority, major part of them have been removed. So, for how long will you tolerate this kind of situation? Because most times those places continue to get bad and, and then continue to also receive negative comments about the roads in Africa. So, you have two questions, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll be penalizing those that ask the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they do come in, in the ship. <laughs> All right, for how long will I come from Umu? Yes, sir. For as long as it takes uh, for us to be able to uh, properly fix the government. I'm not complaining. From Umu to this place is about 25 minutes. Um, uh, the governor of Lagos from his uh, residence in Marina to allow somewhere his offices uh, will take him no less than one hour a day. So, mine is five minutes. Um, 
But that is not to say that I want to continue to stay in village. But then, uh, if you listen to my explanation, uh, since I have somewhere to operate from, I wouldn't use the money that I used to pay salary to go and start fixing the house. I would not do that. But when I have some flexibility and some elbow uh, that I can do that, why not I will? Um, the, uh, the place we are talking about that is this uh, uh, is paid now, but uh, that now is done. Maybe when we finish this uh, interview, they'll take a walk to the place. And I'm sure you will have a different opinion. So uh, look at the place and start badly dilapidated, just like the government's office here. Uh, I think that uh, things we need, uh, government is a continent. So we're not complaining, uh, we will fix them at the appropriate time. But for now, we have a scale of preference that prioritizes salary, uh, infrastructure. You are talking of uh, uh, the state of the rules. Of course, if you've been in Asia long enough, you will know that there have been a lot of Asia in decades. So I believe uh, we wouldn't act like a proverbial artist who uh, has been in the pit for a week or two, and the day they want to bring him out, is harassing them to bring him out quickly. Uh, the place was managed. Um, we are not there. We are moving. If we can uh, do the things we are doing in our mind today, in uh, a few other places, in you know, and of course we get there. The room was not built in a day, and the just four months we uh, we didn't have, so we still have quite some time. And we touch everywhere that uh, we need to touch. I don't know if I've answered your question. I don't know where cross is, sir. It's the same, it's the road now. Every way cross is part of, it, of the road. And uh, we'll get there, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Mr. Hyacinth Okoli. Your Excellency, my name is Hyacinth Okoli. I'm from the Broadcasting Corporation of Father State. Your Excellency, one of the greatest challenges facing Aria is the issue of road infrastructure. Recently, your administration commenced palliative works on the Omaria Ecotel Penelope to assist Aria. And most of these roads that give bad names to Aria belong to the federal government. I want to find out, Your Excellency, what are you going to do differently to ensure that there is greater collaboration between Abia State government and the federal government in terms of rehabilitation of federal roads in the state? Because virtually all of them are dilapidated. Thank you very much. Um, if you have followed, you will notice that the, the minister of works was with me about two weeks ago. And that was the forefront of the discussion with the minister. Uh, yes, the, uh, a lot of those rules are federal rules. But uh, don't deceive yourself. Majority of the very bad rules are state rules. They are federal rules, they are state rules. So they are in terrible conditions. So when you see us uh, do palliative on the Ecuador and Erud, uh, it is not because we are not uh, we are not aware that it's federal. Uh, the argument is that yes, federal, but who uses it? The federal government doesn't use the road. So if uh, the road is bad, they will probably be the last people to get it. So and we believe that we can just sit by and uh, we claim that the road is a road when we can do something about it. And that's why we have consumed uh, with uh, a lot of the road. Uh, we also wanted to uh, do the 
Apa kota expressway. At least one day we have a few quotations uh, before the minister now say no, that we are going to uh, instruct CCECC to go back there and within the next 14 days, at least 20 days motor. And uh, uh, I believe that is going to happen. So, in terms of collaboration, we know very well that uh, that collaboration is very important and uh, we are doing just that and we will do more of that uh, to ensure that all the road be bend the on my bend the on Hakka road is also a federal road and uh, the, so we have to put the pressure also on the federal road uh, to resume work on the day because it is very very bad. So direct answer to your question, we are uh, working closely with the federal government to ensure that these rules are uh, maintained and uh, reduced so that the environment that uh, we get from those rules will be a thing of the past. Thank you. Your Excellency, my name is Malimba. I'm the also come from the village. My session is solid from 91.3 there. Your name is what? Stanley Mbaf. Stanley Mbaf. <laughs> Coming from Iberia, solid from 91.3. Uh, the, there's this report that one of your SSAs resigned and ran back to overseas. We've seen a lot of your assistants who have had happy with you. And I want to ask, did any of your assistants actually resign? Probably went back because probably he doesn't, or he's not quite pleased with the way you're living this well, I'm sure you may have seen the refuter from the name staff. Maybe you didn't believe him. No, I do. Uh, I, I wanted, so, I wanted the man, to the man's uh, wife gave back to the lady, and uh, he sought our permission to go and visit his wife. And then somebody from the Oyibudi, I think the person from the Oyibudi, went to cook up a story. Um, looking for what to say. So, as you go back, you're going to advise saying that there's enough news issues apart from fake news. In, in the past, I think something would have happened to him, but today, uh, anybody can say what they like. Uh, nobody has resigned from my job. And uh, I don't pray that anybody will resign. Mm -hmm. If that's in the prayer of the gentleman, thank that God didn't answer your prayer. Thank you. I work in New Central Television. So a while ago, you did a groundbreaking for the Abia Industrial Innovation Park at Owaza. And while talking, you said um, you had an agreement with the community concerning the property that we were giving to the uh, government. I would like to know in clear terms, um, what sort of agreement you have with them? Is it a monetary form or is it going to be in cash? And then secondly, maybe please is it don't... Is it going to be in cash? Yes, whether you're going to compensate them in cash or you know, or give them work, you know, jobs. And then the um, Bendy Road or SAR, Mission Hill um, compensations as well. How much does it to sum that the state government earmarked for the payment of these compositions that have already commenced. Thank you, sir. The kind of questions you are asking, it looks like you are planning to kidnap people. <laughs> 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 it's a lot of money, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I won't want to give you exact numbers so that nothing happens to my people who are <laughs> after we leave here. Anyway, so the, for all was that? is uh, different kinds of adult. There will be monetary compensation. Um, they will have opportunity for their wives and their children to work because we are very particular. Because the government is also coming to their place. Yeah. If you went there today, you actually sympathize with the people that live in those places. Right? It's very sad because that is also where uh, okay, it comes out from the state. That is a community that makes us be uh, addressed um, as an oil producing state. So it's not fair to leave them in the state if they have been left. 
So, and that's why all of them took out the Jesuit to use the British Army and one of their sons is actually a commissioner in the government, commissioner of Emperor. Uh, so good things uh, happen their way. And uh, I'm happy for them and they're happy also with the people. Uh, now the Osla um, uh, mission here the route. There are 130 uh, buildings. And um, the last time I checked, the total compensation was about 771 million. And uh, that has already been paid. So some people have not received theirs because their account numbers they provided were wrong. Some of us, uh, there are some contention. You know, families are borrowing and say, so, okay, you sort out yourself and you compare the majority of the people are receiving. So, is that helpful? Yes, I'm very good. Thank you. The woman is raising her hand now. <laughs> 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 Very gentle and friendly. And I let the woman answer, ask her question. I, I, will, I will come back to her. Good evening, Good evening. My name is Charles Sobrina. I work with Sun at 209 FM and 9. And uh, Your Excellency, thank you for this privilege for uh, providing this platform so we can be interacting with you. And uh, moving away from that, Your Excellency, uh, the last time it was on the news that uh, the owner of uh, Aba Power visited you and uh, both of you told us that before the end of September that power will be fully restored in time. Your Excellency, it will interest you to know that a week today, by next week, there will be a mass protest by some residents in ABAP against what ABAP power, uh, their high-handedness and the way they've subjugated our people from true hardship and difficulty. Some uh, small-scale businesses are backing up right now because uh, the crazy view, the outrageous view they keep presenting to the people, like last month, uh, running the radio station right now is not easy. Buying this at the rate of 1,100 naira. And uh, last month they gave me light. The total amount of light they gave to me was not up to 24 hours. But guess what? I have my bill is in my car. They gave me 108,000 naira. Then I'm asking these people, and they told me that, that the next month it will increase. And a lot of people keep coming to our station, bringing their bills, shouting, screaming. Last two weeks, it was about tell, uh, tell us they went on a protest. But by next week, Saturday, another one is coming up. Your Excellency, sir, in as much as it's not within your prerogative to provide power. But I think, uh, looking at your relationship with uh, Professor Bart in March, is becoming so becoming your excellency that you intervene in this. It's as crazy as it is right now, sir. So please, your excellency, do something. We are choking. I myself am choking. Okay, Charles, we don't want you to choke. <laughs> <laughs> Let them talk. Give it to a young one. Uh, uh, the, when they tell you to go, they go choke. <laughs> I'm hearing this for the first time, and I must uh, sympathize with you and uh, uh, give the uh, information of how and the perfect utility to have an interface uh, with uh, geometric and other power. And this is the first time I'm hearing about uh, the outrageous views. And uh, when you say they gave you power for less than 24 hours, I mean, the amount of power they gave me. Oh, every day, every day, you calculate it. I mean, for the month, oh, okay. it's not up to 24 I thought hours. it was every day. I would have said you are doing better than a lot of people. Even the power they gave me, I 
Now I, I stay here in you know, Omaha. I, I go to a bar from here every day. Yeah. You know, the lights I get here in you know, Omaha, if I should get such amount of uh, power, I mean, even if they give me 100,000, I will gladly pay. Uh, but you can you don't see so I have, I have taken note of it and I will get a commissioner to engage with them and ensure uh, that the right thing is done. Uh, if you don't have power, then you shouldn't be viewed as pornography. Uh, so we'll take note of that. Okay. Good evening, Excellency. My name is Mara Kapo. I work for Arise News. My question is um, on unemployment and dismissal of some sack or, sack or dismissal of some civil servants who were employed by the former administration between December and May last year. And of course, I understand that an administration rolls on the 29th of May for handover, and the governor has um, the power to give a waiver for employment. My question is this um, why were they sacked or why were they dismissed? Do you also have plans of re employing them or reabsorbing them to the civil service? Knowing that they have uh, protested, they have pleaded with you, I heard they were in your house the other day at Tongosi, though they alleged they were not responded to. What are your plans? Because uh, there are so many of them who are crying to some of us. So I want to know. Your All right, so uh, most of them were employed shortly before the last government left. And uh, some of them had their employment. Backdated. If you go to the, uh, if you check the website of the National Bureau of Statistics, right after this time, the total number of civil servants in Mali was somewhere about 14,857. But the number we saw, we are well over 87,000. So, when you do the wrong thing, you know you did the wrong thing. We had screamed after we won the election. You say, you have employed these people since eight years. It's when you are leaving that you want to create problems for somebody else. And that we are going to disengage all of them. Yeah. So, uh, we don't think it's appropriate. There's also, we have responded to say, there are steps that you need to take when you want to employ a civil servant. Is that right? Have you read that? Yes, sir. So the question you ask all those people that appeal to you, if they go through those steps. So there's no person that was genuinely hired into the civil service that we fired. Not even one person. Okay? So when we finish the reforms, in the civil service, and we determined that we need to uh, hire people who advertise it that they should be done. People who go through the recruitment process, people who would be tested, and then eventually they will be hired, they will go through the probation process. We are sticklers for due process. So if somebody came to my house to protest, they have the right to protest. I also have a right not to see you. And uh, uh, if you call me or you know, wrote me and you say you are coming to talk with me, of course I can talk with you. And say, you come on Monday morning when I'm in this school and then you come and you're carrying back up. Back up. I shouldn't leave my school and come because you carry back up. And in any case, you know you were giving immediately uh, hired. Uh, so, I can tell you for sure that nobody that will be sitting there has been disengaged. I've not disengaged anybody. And I don't plan to disengage it. So they remain unemployed. Sorry? They remain unemployed. I don't know about uh, what were they before. If they were employed before, of course. They can be employed. But if they were unemployed before, and somebody surreptitiously goes through the back door to add their name to the payroll, uh, I have a responsibility. To remove your name so that I can also pay you that I did really work it. Yeah. Nora, are you okay? Okay. Yes, okay.
I'm from Isukwato local government area of Abia State. And uh, just like uh, my colleague once said earlier on that he wants to be selfish by asking about the people of Aba. Your Excellency, I also want to be selfish by asking about your plans about the people of Isukwato local government. Uh, like, uh, right now, sir, um, all roads leading to Isukwato are not actually motorable. Coming from um, uh, Bende to Akara to Isukwato, coming from Nonya, coming from Uturu, and all other um, places not mentioned. Do you think it has to do with your name, Isukwato? <laughs> <laughs> no, you are, your Excellency. Sir. So I just want to know your plans for the people of Isukwato based on the roads uh, and the other. Um, uh, Actually, the right pronunciation is Isukwato. Isu a lot of people call it Isu Kwaka. I said it's very big help. Isu Kwaka, right? Yes, sir. All right, so Isu Kwaka people supported it. And I can't forget them. So I'm aware that the roof is a terrible state. And it's one of the, I think the more than one that goes from the experts into Isu Kwaka. Part of it is good. As a, as a short part, that is good. From Oburo, just short, like. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's a long time that I passed there, but the time I passed there. They are terribly bad, sir. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's the one I've asked them to go and check and measure. Okay, sir. Uh, so at least uh, that's on the federal road. Yes, sir. Uh -huh, so that we can start with that. And um, the Ankara. All the way uh, to Isukwato is a major 
project as part of the erosion. And uh, as part of what I mentioned the, to the Minister of Court to see how he can help. Okay, so we have a uh, super tap on my but uh, don't, uh, don't lose sleep. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yes, Alexis. Okay, we are rounding off. Where's. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Mm. My name is Linda Gabriel. My detector. Is there a remarkable increase in the IGR? If yes, how much does the state generate since the harmonization of the Okay, still edited. So, and um, they, are, are not, um, they are not the magical, so they are from magic heaven. <laughs> <laughs> they are not the magical increases uh, for a whole lot of reasons. One, the validity. So at some point we also wanted to give back to the people. You know, uh, in economics, you use that session to stabilize the economy. So when things are difficult, uh, you don't increase taxes. You actually return taxes to people so that they can spend. So and that is why you hear the word spend your way out of the session. What it means is that you need to put money into the system rather than be money. Uh, so there may not be significant uh, increases for the rest of the year. Uh, but uh, because I have also heard the view that taxation is government share of the prosperity, so we want to create prosperity first. By the time we pay prosperity, we cannot ask for part of it back. And so that's why we are not too bullish about taxes and our, even though we have streamlined everything digitally and ensure that the, uh, the era where people collect money put in their pocket is gone and gone for good. So you can just at the touch of the bottom pay your tax from the bank into the government's uh, revenue account and then uh, you get um, a receipt on your phone that you can show do the things we are doing. So while we are doing that, we don't expect a radical uh, increase in the total taxes we are collecting. But over time, I believe that uh, they, that will happen. In terms of numbers, I'm not uh, sure how the numbers are right here. But you can ask if it's of interest to you. Okay. Okay. We are rounding off uh, for then. I will, you know, give His Excellency a few minutes. Okay. My name is Kingsley. I was a publisher for the products. Sir, um, my question is around part of the city center in Seagate. I wonder how it will look like if your son would on the sixth day. Beautiful. But when you get to it, see it, it gets, uh, you see that uh, chaotic nature there. And during the daytime, they smoke around there. So, and years back, they located people around that area to open the market. Do you have any plans for a seagate and open the market where we have lots of knock up shops and then uh, unused and uh, bushes around there? Do you have any plans to open okay, so you see, open the market is okay that people will be there. But then uh, the people you have at this gate will not go to the market, no matter what they come. So what we what we decided to do is to relocate them to some primary school, I think it's called Union, uh, Union Primary School, and relocate the primary school to another land that uh, we are acquiring. Okay, so if we have them in that place, everybody will send them. And we can now uh, do magic with this again. But until we have successfully located all the people, and you know, yes, it's mixed by, you see, all sorts. Uh, but we can't throw them out uh, without finding an authority for them. And that is the same thing that we are doing with all the buses you see around the tower. 
going back to the NMPC filling station. We are now preparing the Ohia uh, motor park to move all of them in there. And we can now clear out those local places, uh, install street lights, and beautify the entire place. So as you are entering the capital city, you know that it's the capital city you are entering. Right. Thank you. Okay. That sums it up. Okay, Your Excellency, your final words. Mm. All right. Fabian. So let me thank Ndiaka once again uh, for the support they have given this government and encourage them to continue to support the government with their government and uh, the government that is not beholden to any godfather of the government that is beholden to act everything. Uh, everything we are doing is for our people in our day. Uh, yes, uh, there will be opposition, and that is the duty of democracy. Uh, so we encourage opposition, in spite of how responsible they may choose to be. But opposition is part of the incident of democracy. Um, then we are not doing it right. We, if you genuinely come out and you want to share better ideas with us, are always ready and we yield to superior logic. Uh, there have been a few things we have wanted to do, and uh, by the time superior logic uh, comes in, we yield to it. Uh, I want to thank everyone that has uh, listened to me, and uh, this is going to be a monthly ritual. Uh, by the end of September, I mean, by the end of October into November, we will have the second edition. So, uh, and I believe at that second edition, we will probably be able to have some phone lines uh, that uh, people who are not there and uh, participate by asking uh, questions. So, once again, let me thank everyone that listened. I wish you a happy Independence Day and tomorrow is October. Thank you very much.